morning, everyone, and welcome to Think Future. My name is Chris Kalabukas, and once again, we're coming in July from deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation startups, the future, not necessarily those, not necessarily in that order. In fact, all we're seen to be talking about nowadays is AI. So we may just be, maybe I'll just change the name to Think AI or something like that. Maybe thinkfuture.ai. Is that domain taken? I better take it because all of a sudden, it's hot as a spark. Once again, we're coming at you live from deep in the heart of Silicon Valley, California. We're talking innovation startups, the future. Not necessarily those and not necessarily in that order. If you watch on YouTube, smack that subscribe button, hit that bell so you'll be notified when a new show comes online. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast service, please subscribe and please drop it out on Apple Podcasts. I greatly appreciate it. Now, remember, last week I told you that I launched AIDaily.us. AIDaily.us is your source for AI news because all we seem to care about nowadays is AI. Now, when I heard this story today, or last week, I thought to myself, this is it. This is beautiful. And uh, you guys are familiar with Mechanical Turk, right? So Mechanical Turk was named after a Mechanical Turk of antiquity. And I forget, I think the story may be apocryphal or whatever. Some guy created a robot or something that acted like a robot. I think it was a, a robot that he called the Mechanical Turk and it played chess, right? And he wheeled it out and he would call people over to come look at it, come watch it. And it would play chess, or it was some other game, I forget, maybe it was backgammon, who knows, with, with a player, but it, was, it looked like a robot. It looked mechanical. It was a mechanical Turk. But inside the mechanical Turk was a human being. There was a human being actually playing. There wasn't, it wasn't really mechanical. It wasn't a real robot. There was a human being controlling it in the back. Fast forward today, and we have Amazon's Mechanical Turk. And what is Amazon's Mechanical Turk? Well, it's simple. You go in and you ask it for a task, and it will take that task and it will farm it out to humans all around the world. Now, if you've ever had an experience with this, they basically farm it to humans and pay them hardly anything. So, well, hardly anything in American terms, but in other terms from other countries, maybe it's a lot of money. Who knows? The fact is, is that it's a online interface to people and you ask people to do it and there's people in the back who are doing it. it just in the same way the mechanical turk of antiquity worked well these enterprising turks these individuals who are behind mechanical turk who the people who had these tasks farmed out to them are now using ai to complete the task and present it as if it was a human created task in the most amazing example of the laziness of human, although some people may not call it laziness, I like to call it laziness, but it's just a short form for resource conservation. See, us human beings, we like to do as little work as possible for as much reward as possible. It's not stupid, it's not lazy. What it is, is helps the survival of the human being. The less you do, the more energy you conserve, and the more you get back, the more the rewards are. So why not? Makes sense, right? So these people were basically using AI results to return human-like results to the people who are expecting human-like results. So what does this mean? Does this mean that the tasks that the Mechanical Turk have been given to do shouldn't be given to, do, to humans to do? They should be given to AI to do? No. I mean, the tasks that they were given to do were supposed to be for humans to do. Now, the fact of the matter is that some of the tasks that they were given were probably so dumb and idiotic and repetitive and something that a, a AI could probably do very easily, then those tasks shouldn't have even been given to a mechanical jerk. They should have been given to an AI in general. So that I just find that interesting. And it's, it's all part of the whole, people are worried about losing their jobs to AI. And it's like, sure, you should be worried about losing your job to AI if you're doing a repetitive job that can be replaced by AI. If you're doing that kind of repetitive job that doesn't require your creativity, doesn't require your big human brain, then of course you're gonna lose your job to AI. And in fact, you should you lose your job to AI because you're wasting your human brain on doing something that an AI could do. Better for you to do some other job which truly leverages your human brain. You have a big human brain and it can do so much. Why are you wasting it doing a task that AI could do? Now where we've fallen down is creating jobs for humans. 
We seem to like creating jobs, but we need to start creating jobs specifically for humans. We have to look at the job that we're creating and go, is this a job that only a human can do? Because if an AI can do it and the AI can do it well, then we should give that job to the AI and get the human another job. This requires us to be more circumspect about work and how we create work and tasks and how we create jobs in general. That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.